as many of you guys are aware, you know, these aren't the easiest times with pandemic going on. And not only that, you know, we have our beloved Pastor Shrive going through what he's going through. And we had a shocking news you know, during the week when you know, our sister, Kathy, she's going through you know, colorectal cancer. So, you know, if you're, you were not in that shoes, or if you're not in that shoes, you know, it's hard to really fathom or understand. You know. Last thing you could do is, you know, you know, talking about some, you know, doctrinal stuff or about sin or anything like that right now. It's time for comfort. It's time for encouragement. It's time for prayers. If you have never prayed for, you know, those two people in the past, you know, this is a time to pray for them. I mean, if you can't pray for them right now, I don't think you ever pray for them, right? And they need prayers. And before I go into my uh, preaching, and I just wanted to bring some, you know, good news that's waiting for us after our life here is over, or, you know, before the rapture. A man said, the Buddhists talk a lot about hell because they are going there. We talk a lot about heaven because we are going there. This came from a converted Chinaman named Carpenter Kao of Pasien, West China. Of course, when he said we talk a lot about heaven, he was only referring to Chinese Christians. American Christians say very little about it. When you reflect on your life, how often do you talk about heaven? How often do you talk about heaven with your loved ones, you know, with your spouses, with your children, with your friends? Dwight L. Moody's favorite subject to preach, guess what, was on heaven. He used to begin the sermon by saying, we are near heaven tonight than we ever have been before in our lives. Those are comforting words. I mean, if you, don't, you have nothing to say when you see, you know, Pastor Shrive or Kathy, you know, that's something you could say. Like what Dwight Moody said, we are near heaven tonight than we ever have been before in our lives. I mean, if I were going through trials, if I were to hear that, that's a very comforting word. Right? There isn't too much that you have to remember. You, know, you could always paraphrase it. You, know, you and I are closer to heaven more than ever before. I mean, thank God for that. I mean, there are certain perks with heaven, right? Heaven for the child of God is a place without death, tears, sorrow, crying, or pain. Think about it. You never have to worry about pain, crying, sorrow, tears, and death. I mean, it is a place where there is no night or darkness. I mean, wow. And the Bible says, they shall hunger no more. I know some of you guys, even myself, we get hungry a lot, right? Neither thirst anymore, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. I mean, heaven is a perfect place. It is a place of perfect satisfaction. You know, a lot of times, you and I, we're not satisfied with what we have. However, once you're in heaven, you don't have to worry about that. And, you know, we don't really, I don't want to get into politics too much, right? But heaven is a place of perfect government. You don't have to worry about liberals. You don't have to worry about conservatives. You don't have to worry about elections or anything because heaven is a perfect place. Think about it. Can you imagine the sheer joy of having a body? And you have a perfect body that never will wear out, hair that doesn't come out, teeth that doesn't come out, eyes that don't need glasses. I mean, think about it. You don't need to worry about sinuses. You don't need to worry about diabetes. Can you live in forever and ever in a place where you never get weary? You know, as you get older, you get weary, you know? You don't feel like you're in your teens or 20s or 30s. And you never get tired, never have to worry about, you know, kidney problems, varicose veins, you know, no liver problems, any other leukemia, any other disease. I mean, when you constantly think about that and before you listen to preaching, man, our God has prepared for us a place that is truly unimaginable, 
I mean, it's beyond our imagination. With that, you and I could go on each day. With that, you and I could comfort each other. But when you talk about heaven, you know, you can't really get down. I mean, if you're the type of person who talks about heaven and get down, I really don't want to talk to you. I mean, how depressed or different type of character do you have to have to be a downer when you talk about heaven? But heaven is something that as a saved child of God, like you and I, we can enjoy, and that's a place we're going. I mean, we're looking for, just like the hymn said, we're looking for that trumpet, you know, trump of God, you know, come up hither with your name on it. You know, Dale Carnegie said that sweetest name that someone, sweetest name to any person is their own name. And then God knows your name. I was going to be like, come up hither, you know, David Shrive, right? I mean, come up hither, right? You know, Timothy, Kim, and Sarah Han, and everybody here. I mean, we can't wait for that day. Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 27. Psalms 27. Psalm 27. We're going to look at verse 1 through 6. Psalms 27. 1 through 6. Book of Psalms, chapter 27, verses 1 through 6. The title of the message will be, When the days are tough, you can still praise God. When the days are tough, you can still praise God. Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Pastor Shrive, would you pray for the message? Amen. Before I start, I just want to say, you know, I commend Pastor Shrive, and without hair, he looks so much younger. You know, me and Sister Bonnie were talking about it. I mean, he's like at least 15 years younger. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, you know, pray for Pastor Shrive. Yeah, Pastor Shrive. And Mrs. Shrive as well, and as well as the families, right? and Kathy's family as well, and Kathy. So, when the days are tough, you can still praise God. As you read in Book of Psalms 27, David went through a lot. David's days were not always rosy, always fun. It wasn't full of pleasure. He went through a lot, a lot of tough days, a lot of difficult days. On April 21st, of 1764, John Wesley, 
I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with John Wesley, wrote in his journal about a visit that he had made. He said, today I visited one who was ill in bed, and after having buried seven of her family, think about it, after burying seven of her family in six months, back in 1764, had just heard that the eighth, her beloved husband, was cast away at sea. I asked, this is John Wesley speaking to her, do not you fret at any of those things, she said with a lovely smile upon her pale cheek with joy. Oh no, how can I fret at anything which is the will of God? Let him take all besides. He has given me himself. I love, I praise him every moment. Think about it. This is a woman who lost six of the, I mean, seven people, including her beloved husband, within six months' time. You and I, I don't know about you, if I lost like seven of my folks, including my spouse, I'm not sure I'll have that joy, or I'm not sure I'll be praising God. However, this woman said, he has given me himself. I love, I praise him every moment, which is the will of God. I mean, when the days are tough, you can still praise God because that's in the will of God. I mean, you and I, who are you to say, you know, God, my will is better than God's will? Right? Only those who have faith in the Lord are able to face the troubles and difficult days and tough days with praise in their heart. You need to have faith in the Lord to praise him. Psalms 27 that we just read shows us that David was the one who had great faith in the Lord. Think about it. Many of the Psalms, when you look at it, there's inscriptions on that top that gives us some insight into the circumstances surrounding the specific Psalm. If you have been reading Psalm, you know, you see the like, title, like, you know, inscription on top of it. I mean, we're told that Psalm 3 is a Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. So those are not the good days from your own son. Those are tough days. Psalm 34 is a Psalm of David when he changes behavior before Abimelech. Psalm 51 was penned by David after Nathan, the prophet, came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Okay, those are not good days. Psalm 57 is a Psalm of David when he fled from Saul in the cave. David faced Many battles in his life. His life is full of battles. He was pursued by the king of Israel, Saul. He fled from his own son, Absalom. He endured many battles against the Philistines. And he suffered greatly as a result of his own sin. And Psalms 27 is one of those psalms that is simply titled, A Psalm of David. And we know who wrote it. Of course, David. We know that he was facing some of the, I mean, worst difficulties that someone could face in their life. But we're told the specific circumstances that prompt his prayer. In this psalm, David refers to the trouble that he was facing because of his enemies. And then many of you guys, including myself, we face difficult times because of our enemies, right? It's your flesh. It's the world. It's the devil. They may attack you financially. We see it nowadays physically. But those attacks are coming. There is no doubt that David was in an intense battle. And even though when all these troubles were around him, David had great confidence in himself. No, he had great confidence in the Lord. Not only did he have confidence in the Lord, he was able to praise the Lord, even in the midst of such travel times. When you are in such travel times, you could say, I have confidence in the Lord, but do you praise God? You know, a lot of times we say, you know what, I know the Lord's in control, I know the Lord can take care of everything, but how often, but how rare is the occasion 
when you actually praise God for all the times of trouble that's surrounding you. Verse 6 says, And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. You know, when things are going tough, I don't know, singing is the first thing that I do, right? When times are tough, I'm not sure if singing is that first thing that you do. Do you pick up your hymn book, you know, open to your favorite hymn, and start singing and praising God? I'm pretty sure that will make a lot of difference in your life. If you're going through the hardships, you know, stop what you're doing. Take out a hymn book. You don't need music. You know, you could sing from all of your heart and praise to the Lord. There are so many hymns for different situations, right? That's why it's divided into different circumstances. You pick one and you praise God. Think about how much joy you will have. Think about how different your outlook will be and your attitude will be. David was filled with praise and thanksgiving and adoration for all God had done in his life. When times are going tough, I mean, do you think about everything that God has done for you? Or do you think about that, just that moment when you're going through that tough time and you start blaming God? If you don't like blaming God, you start blaming your loved ones. If you don't like blaming your loved one, you start blaming the society. If you don't like blaming society, then you start blaming everything else. Whether you start blaming you know, politics, politicians, everything. However, when times were tough, David was filled with praise and thanksgiving and adoration. I mean, that's something that you and I could learn from him every single day because we go through things every single day. You look at him, he could just write a book and he could actually cite a psalm, right? How to have praise, you know, uh, in tough times. There are at least three things that David teaches about how to deal with tough times. One of the things that we must comprehend the personality of God, seek the presence of God, and rest in the protection of God. So let us begin by examining one of the first points. Point number one, you can still praise God when you comprehend the personality of God. David was a man who walked with God. He's described as a man after God's own heart. The longer you know someone, ask any of the husbands and wives in this room, the more time you spend with them, the more you will learn about their personality. I don't know if it's true, like, as you live longer and longer, like your personality kind of mirrors each other, or you kind of get, you know, similar. Sometimes this is a good thing, but sometimes not so much. Or should I say a lot of times it's not a good thing. However, the longer you walk with the Lord and the more time you spend with him, the more fellowship you have with him, the more you will learn about him. I mean, that is a, always a good thing. I mean, in your Christian walk, can you honestly say that you know him? You know, besides from him saving you from hell and all the practical stuff, but do you have that personal relationship? Do you long to know him more and more? I mean, the more you know him, the more you will praise him. The less you know him, the less you will praise him. The reason you and I don't praise God like how you and I ought to is because we don't know him. We don't desire to know him more. There's that fire that you used to have has burned out, that first love when you got saved. However, it's not too late. You know, there is a shout. There is amen. Why? Because you want to get to know him more and because you want to praise him. You know, when Brother Davis here, you know, sometimes, you know, he shouts and stuff. And some of you guys might be like, oh, what did he eat this morning, right? But because he's shouting to God, because he wants to praise him. Because of adoration, thanksgiving. 
it's not too late for people in this room who has not gone through it or experienced it, who has not longed to know him more, for you to start knowing him more. You have to have that desire. When you begin to recognize and understand the many attributes of God's personality, you will become more and more confident in his abilities. When you get closer to God, you're going to have more confidence in him. When you get closer to God, whatever the situation is, you're going to praise him for it. Why? Because when you have confidence in the Lord, you'll be able to trust him. You know, trust is a huge thing. You and I are here today because we trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ to save us from hell. However, many times, 90% of Christians don't go further than that. They're stuck there. Why? Because they don't pray enough, they don't praise him enough, they don't thank him enough, and they don't have fellowship with him enough. This is where you have to make a decision. You see all the things going on in your life right now. I mean, pandemics here, an economic downturn, people around you are hurt, going through illness. I mean, don't you want to get closer to the Lord? I mean, think about it. When there is a job opening, you know, they say it's not what you know, it's who you know. When you know that person, they'll connect you. They might have to help you get the job. You know, in other words, you don't have gotten any interview because you know the person who knows the hiring manager, you get inside track. I mean, if you're not close to God, when you're praying for someone, I don't know how much powerful your prayer is going to be. The more closer you are to God, I guarantee you, the more powerful your prayers are. You're living like the devil, and you suddenly start praying, Lord, blah, 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 and you don't get right with the Lord. Don't expect God to answer your prayers in a way that you expect. You have to get closer to him. I mean, going back to Psalms 27, verse 1, listen to what David declares about the personality of God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Are some of you guys fearful? Do you get easily afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. He describes the Lord as what? My light, my salvation, and the strength of my life. How do you describe the Lord? On the spot. Would, would he come out as your light, your salvation, and strength of your life? Or are you your own light? Are you your own salvation? And are you the strength of your own life? A lot of times, you and I, our focus is at the wrong place. That's why when the tough times come, you cannot praise God. However, when glory is your strength, salvation, and light, you can still praise him. I mean, though trouble surround David, he knew that he was not in darkness because the Lord was his light. Man, when things are going bad, right? When they say things go bad, everything, you know, stacks up, everything gets bad all at once. Everything seems like dark around you. However, when the Lord is your light, those darkness will not affect you negatively. Danger was all around David. David knew that the Lord was his salvation. You know, sometimes as Christians, you know, we don't, we show lack of faith. When times get tough, we suddenly get dejected, discouraged, and we get depressed. I mean, that's not a real Christian characteristic. When devil tries to discourage you, when devil tries to depress you, when devil tries to bring troubles and sadness on your way, you should have more confidence in the Lord. You should have more strength in the Lord and you should trust him more and more. And that's the characteristics that you can see from David. He was able to praise God. Why? Because he trusted him. He knew his personality. As God's children, you and I, 
can have same confidence in him. Uh, you remember, Pastor Shrive says that when he was reading his Bible, like you know, early in the morning when he was working for Chick Publication, it felt so real to him. You know, because he was reading it day after day, and he was so close to it. It was as if David was talking to him right there on the spot. When was the last time was the Bible that real to you? Was it a year ago? Was it a month ago? Was it ever? Never. I mean, if you can think of Bible as real to you and you don't have, you know, regular fellowship with the Lord, how can you expect to praise God when the times are tough? You can't. You're not there. You have to take that step little by little and get closer to him. I mean, you can look at times in your own life when God has delivered you in the past, and you can trust him that he can deliver you in your future circumstances, right? You are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. You are his children. You're delivered from sin. Think about it. I mean, earth is the hell that you and I will see, right? I mean, that's, that's a comfort in itself. Think about the rest of the people who's not saved. This is their heaven, and they'll burn in hell eternally, right? Listen to what John says in his gospel in book of John, verse, chapter 1, verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of man, and the light shineth in darkness. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. See, not only Jesus Christ is our light and salvation, he is the strength of our life. Think about this for a moment. David was known as being a great warrior. He not only slew that great giant Goliath, but he had many noted victories against the Philistines. And you all know about the story of Goliath. Even with his skill and personal abilities, David looked to the Lord as the strength of his life. Think about it. I mean, sometimes you and I get so haughty after victory. Imagine how your attitude will be after you defeated Goliath. I mean, this nine foot five, you know, close to 10 feet, giant, you know, and then you are out there as a young man, and then you slew him. However, David gave glory to God in all things. You know, I believe that David, you know, his secret to success was always trusting in the Lord for the victory. He had the skills and strengths to secure the victory. However, in all things, he trusted the Lord. Listen to what David said to Goliath just before he slew him. In 1 Samuel 17, 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the better is the Lord, and he will give you into our hands." I mean, think about it. When you have daily battles in your life against your flesh, against the devil, against the world, can you confidently shout like David did to Goliath? I mean, David faced what some would call unbeatable odds. I mean, imagine we have this little Nathan, you know, fighting against Mr. Lee, right? in a battle, or like in a you know, wrestling match, I doubt any of us will give little Nathan any chance of beating you know, Mr. Lee. However, he was victorious. Why? He was victorious because he trusted in the Lord to provide the victory. You can't have comfort because why? You trust in the Lord that he'll provide the victory. It's not up to you, it's not up to me. It's not up to anybody around you. It's up to the Lord. 
That's why no matter what the results are, you praise God. Because at the end of the day, that's victory. This, what, this is why so many times we're defeated when we're tempted to look elsewhere besides from the Lord. Think about it. You know, I fight mosquitoes sometimes on a nightly basis, right? Somehow they come inside your home. You know, first thing I should do is, you know, pray to God, you know, and everything. But man, you get so heated up. You bring your zipper or zipper or whatever electric thing and try to swipe it, right? But once you calm down, you give a quick prayer to God, suddenly that little mosquito shows up in your eyes. And then you zap it and you kill it. And you could have a peaceful night of sleep, right? At least that's my case. But some of you guys have your own mosquitoes in your lives. It comes your way on a nightly basis, on a daily basis. You bring out your own tools, you bring out your own spears and zeppers, and you try to kill it. But it frustrates you, you have no peace, you can't praise God, you get angry, you get angry at your loved ones, everybody else around you. However, all you needed to do was trust in God for his victory, like David. Then you would have peace and you would have victory. And you would praise God a lot earlier than later, later after you regret for not doing what you were supposed to do. How can you offer praises to God even on tough times? Start by comprehending the personality of God. Secondly, you can praise God even during tough times when you seek the presence of God. Let's look at verse 4. Psalms 27, verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David did not just live off of past victories. He didn't just spend his time reflecting on what God had done for him. You know, you and I sometimes fall into that trap. You know, you just dwell in the past, right? Oh, you know, that was, those are good times, you know. However, what David did is different from many of you is that he continued to seek the Lord. He continued. He said, I will seek after the Lord that I may dwell in his house all the days of my life. I mean, as a result of past experiences, David knew, and you know, because I know you have victory in the Lord. I know you had joy in the Lord in the past. How sweet it was to have fellowship with him. I mean, when was the last time did you have sweet fellowship with the Lord? I mean, when you have sweet fellowship with the Lord, comfort is there all the time. You know his presence. It is a great thing to know that you can run to the Lord in the times of trouble. I mean, can, I mean, you should be shouting and you should be you know, hollering that, hey, whenever times of trouble comes, I can just run to the Lord. There are so many people, so many unsaved people, even so-called Christians, can find comfort. When they have trouble, they go to psychologists. When they have trouble, they go to TV. When they have trouble, they go to immoral relationship. When they have trouble, they go to internet instead of going to the Lord. It is comforting to know that you and I can trust him to protect us in the midst of storm. We're in the midst of storm, everyone. It's not humpy dumpy, you know, everything's okay life right now. You know, we're at the end, you know, Lord's coming soon. But however, you and I have that great, great, great assurance that he will walk with us through the valleys of life. He will walk with us through this pandemic. He'll walk with us through this physical ailment. He'll walk with us through any financial strain. He'll walk with us until then. I mean, isn't that a great comfort? You don't have to wait until the world completely falls apart to seek the Lord. You could seek the Lord right now. You should have desired to have more fellowship with him right now. Not until your life is you know, completely torn apart. So in this passage, David indicates that he desired to live in the tabernacle itself so that he could be surrounded by the presence of God daily. 
I mean, do you want to be surrounded by the presence of God daily? Come on. Wouldn't that be the ideal life? He states that his desire was to behold the beauty of the Lord. When was the last time you wanted to hold the beauty of the Lord? You could find those beauty in the Word of God through prayer. When was the last time you seeked out the presence of the Lord? I mean, he longed for the sweetness of the Lord's presence. You know, you and I love sweet things. We love sweet candy, sweet chocolate, sweet ice cream, you know, sweet dessert, everything. So one thing's true that a lot of people like sweet stuff, almost, if not everybody. When was the last time you were seeking for sweet relationship, sweetness of Lord's presence? He wanted more of God. He wanted to know more about him. Even though he already had a wonderful relationship with him. Think about it. You and I cannot be at the level of David. He was already so much more closer to him than you and I. However, he wanted to know more about him. You know, when you see you know, our forefathers and when you see our you know, leaders and pastors, that's one thing I could see in them as well. They want to know more about him. I mean, they probably know so much more Bible than you and I, but they want to know more about him. I mean, they want to know more and more each day. They're busy. They have to take care of their sheep. They have to take care of their family. However, they always find time to know more about him. That is the way it should be for every one of us in this room. We should seek his presence. You and I should know more about him each day and have desire to know more about him. And that is exactly what David does in the latter part of this psalm. Let's look at verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breed out cruelty. I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. In order to successfully make your request known unto God, you must seek his presence. You cannot be lackadaisical. You can't just lie down on your bed and just say, Lord, help me, Lord, help this brother, sister. No. You get down on your knees and spend quality time with the Lord. You know, George Mueller, think about George Mueller. I mean, he prayed like three, four hours on his knees every day. And the Lord fulfilled his knees every day. I mean, it's a great testimony. I wonder what kind of testimony you have regarding seeking the presence of the Lord. And lastly, you can still praise God when the days are tough, when you rest in the protection of God. Let's look at verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Here, David reveals many blessings of seeking the Lord with all of your heart. He confidently states that in the midst of trouble, God would hide me in his pavilion. Think about it. I could praise God in the midst of this storm because he will protect me no matter what. There is no indication anywhere in the Bible, anywhere in the Bible where God's children are exempt from trouble in this life. You and I will eventually go through some kind of trouble. However, when you walk with the Lord, you can trust him to protect you. You know, that is a great assurance. As the world gets worse, days get tougher, things get, you know, uh, I mean, 
That's why me and my wife, we stop watching news too much. All you see is same, same bad things over and over and over. It just frustrates you. You know, you have all this media, you know, you can't trust them, you can't trust anything. And it just makes you angry as a Christian seeing how wrong the world is turning into. However, you don't have to worry about it. In him, you find comfort and then you can rest even in the worst of times. Think about it, so many people are worrying about their finances, you know, their, their security, safety, right? Whether you're rich, whether you're poor. However, as a child of God, you have a refuge in God in times of trouble, and you could see David's proclamation many times in Psalms that you can trust God and you can rely on his protection. You know, Psalms 46, 11 says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing a lot of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble, Psalm 59, 16. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God, Psalm 60, 62, 7. When it is dark, he is our light. You know, when we are weak, he is our strength. When the fiery darts of the wicked come our way, he is our shield. When the enemy pursues us, he is our refuge. Think about it. You have an almighty God who is your light, your strength, your shield, and your refuge. How can you not praise God? How can you not find comfort in him? There is so much hope. That's why the book of Psalms is such an encouraging book to read, right? There's so much hope to be found in Psalms, right? As children of God, you can claim these promises, right, that David spoke of in these verses. Man, that's a privilege. Thank God for that. You know what? You and I could say the Lord is our light and our salvation. The Lord is our strength and the Lord is our refuge. J.C. Pittman pointed out the fact that a bellboy rings only during storms. The beating of the waves and wind brings out the music that is within it. So too do trials reveal what is inside a person. When tough times come, it will reveal who you are. Whether you are seeking the presence of the Lord, where you comprehend personality of God, where you trust in his protection. Life will go on whether you like it or not. Tough times are there whether you like it or not. It is up to you to praise God, find comfort, get closer to him in this sea of storm. When you do that, I guarantee you, including myself, will find so many victories like David, will write so many victorious psalms like David, will praise him just like David. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, thank you for the word of God. And many times we just neglect so much things and so many blessings that you have given to us because of our selfish ways, proud ways, haughty ways. Heavenly Father, help us to recognize that you are our refuge, our strength in these difficult days. Heavenly Father, I pray that we will get closer to you. We'll get right with you if we have any sin problems. We'll put fellowship with you as our top priority. And Lord God, we pray for our loved ones, especially our Pastor Shrine and Sister Kathy. Lord God, everything's in your will, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are they called crying to your purpose, Lord. I pray that you comfort them through your word. I pray that your healing touch will be with them. We can't do it, but I know that you can. And Lord God, I pray that through this experience, we can give more glory to you. And Lord God, bless rest of the day and the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.